Before we start today's show, Laker Nation has responded so well to all of the coverage that we've been putting up here on the Lakers Report. So because of that, we want to thank you, our loyal subscribers, for tuning in and supporting everything that we do. So every video that we publish this week right here on the channel, we're giving shout outs to some of our loyal subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed and you want to stay in the know with entertaining and informative Lakers coverage, hit that red subscribe button. Let's get to 42,000 subs and let's get into today's Lakers news and rumors. Welcome in to the Lakers Report by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Chase Sr. A juicy show coming your way, and we start off with some very fascinating and interesting quotes from Stephen A. Smith, who said, you know what? After this year, the Los Angeles Lakers should trade away the unicorn in Anthony Davis. Here's what Stephen A. had to say about AD. I didn't want to say this because I have mad love and respect for Anthony Davis, and I still think this brother's a star. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about the Lakers beyond this season. They have to trade Anthony Davis. You don't keep Anthony Davis. Here's why. Because his value is his value as a player, but durability is a question mark at age 28. So when you think about his stock being as high as it's going to be, is that right now? And if you're looking at LeBron James and the fact that you need additional pieces, I got to say Anthony Davis is the guy that you could get a lot for in return, potentially because of his potential. Now, Stephen A. Smith alluded to this, but I'm going to double down on it. Availability in sports is the best ability. And Anthony Davis has a bunch of ability when he's right, when he's healthy, when he's humming. He's a top five player in the NBA. But throughout his entire NBA career, not just with his stint during Los Angeles Lakers, he has been so injury prone. And the injuries, as he continues to get older, are going to become the utmost of concern for Los Angeles moving forward. LeBron James is already 37 years old. How much longer can can he continue to put the team on his back? I think when he came to Los Angeles, he was expecting Anthony Davis to be consistently reliable, but AD outside of the bubble season has not. So moving forward, LeBron needs as much help as possible. And if Anthony Davis continues to be out of the lineup sporadically, those are big problems for Los Angeles if they want to compete for another NBA championship. So before we continue to explore this, break this down and dissect it, let me ask you this. Should the Lakers trade Anthony Davis? Type T for trade, K for keep. I understand there are so many loyal AD lovers, but we're talking about a realistic scenario here. So be sure to get those votes in. This will also be the pinned comment. So if you get hit with that YouTube ad break, just scroll on down and get your votes in. During last year, when I had explored just the idea of trading Anthony Davis away for a player like Damian Lillard, people were calling me a fraud and a phony in the comment section. And I understand why. AD is special. Throughout his three years with Los Angeles, he's been fabulous when he's been on the court. And he was able to overcome that slow start to this year and the last several games since coming off of injury, he's been really, really good. 24 points per over the last three years, almost a walking double-double night in, night out, two blocks per game as he continues to be an elite defender and give you a bunch on that end of the floor, and he's shooting a little less than 51% from the floor. But get this, for as good as Anthony Davis is, for as much potential as I still think he has, he has never played a full season throughout his entire NBA career with the New Orleans Pelicans and with the Los Angeles Lakers. So he has never really been a guy, according to some of those inside the Lakers practice facility, that has put in the most work in terms of his body and coming into training camp in the peakest form of shape. And it's hard to argue that and go against that considering his injury resume. 2019-2020, missed nine games out of 71. And the bubble season was really a blessing in disguise for him because an injury-prone player got a couple months off and he was wreaking havoc in the bubble as a legitimate co-star to LeBron James. He was phenomenal in that finals run. 2020-2021 last year, missed about half the games, 36 out of 72. And if you were to stay healthy against the Phoenix Suns, I think LA would have won that series. Maybe they could have won their second consecutive NBA championship. And this year, 
Season ain't over, 21 out of 57 games that he has missed. There's no doubt that Anthony Davis is one of one. He has such a unique blend of skills. He is a unicorn. We really don't see many players of his athletic caliber ever. And we haven't throughout the entire history of the NBA. But if you were to trade him right now, going back to Stephen A. Smith's point, at 28 years old, I can guarantee you there is a team or teams, maybe even a plethora of teams out there across the NBA who look at the special ability of Anthony Davis. They'd be willing to trade for him. They'd be willing to mortgage a bunch of picks, a bunch of players, and maybe even a marquee superstar for Anthony Davis like maybe, say, a Bradley Beal if you wanted to trade Davis for Beal this offseason as there continues to be a tumultuous environment in our nation's capital. That's the level of caliber of player that we're talking about getting back for Anthony Davis if you trade him now, barring any bad injury. So if an Anthony Davis trade were to happen, it would certainly send a ripple effect across the entire NBA, and if a trade of AD happens, or any trade for that matter, goes down with the Los Angeles Lakers, we have you covered here on the Lakers Report. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button down below as we bring you the best and latest news, rumors, trade updates, injury news, and turn on those notifications. Therefore, anytime we push out a video, anytime we go live, you will be notified. Off the top of the show, I had said to all of our loyal subscribers, we're giving y'all some shout outs. So shout out to the homies, Alvin, Jade, Scorpio, Colin Thompson, and Eric Life. Thank you so much for supporting everything we do here on the channel. Lakers stood pat. As Rob Palenka didn't make any moves heading into Thursday's NBA trade deadline, could they be active on the NBA buyout market? If they are, according to Adrian Wojnarowski, they could pick up a very good point guard who could be made available in Goran Dragic. And I think Dragic would be a fascinating addition to this Lakers lineup. According to Woj, Lakers expected to be among the top suitors for Dragic once he's bought out by San Antonio as he was traded there from above the border by the Toronto Raptors. He could be a much-needed boost to a struggling team. Now, the Lakers won't be the only organization and the only team vying for his services. There is going to be competition for one of the backup, better point guards in the NBA, a guy who can even start and still play at a really high level, even though he's been in the league for a long while. Other teams in the mix, Los Angeles Clippers, your Los Angeles Lakers, the Milwaukee Bucks, Brooklyn Nets, Chicago Bulls, and the Golden State Warriors. Now, the Clippers made an acquisition for Norm Powell. He's out for the foreseeable future because of a broken bone in his foot. So they could look to further try to get into the playoffs and further solidify that lineup by bringing in a player like Dragic. Yes, Russell Westbrook and the experiment this year has been an utter disaster. Now, I will give him credit. He was able to avoid some of the temptations of just going wild offensively over the weekend against the Golden State Warriors, and I thought he played in control and looked really, really good. But I think Dragic would be a better point guard presence than a guy like Russell Westbrook because he is the prototypical pass-first point guard who sets up the offense and is able to maneuver around the court and find shots for his teammates and find shots for himself as well. He would really, really help this team, a calming presence who has has a bunch of playoff experience, some Olympic experience. He's played in a lot of big international games as well. Never phased by the moment, wouldn't be phased by the pressure in Los Angeles. I would really like Goran Dragic in Los Angeles. Today's show presented to you by our sportsbook partner, Bet. US. Head to chatsports.com slash Lakers, enter the promo code Lakers125 for a 125% deposit bonus. Chase, what does that mean? Well, you put in $100, you get $125 back. That's $225 to game with only if you use that link in that promo code to my right. Lakers special props. We always have you covered. In addition to news and rumors, prop bets as well. To make the NBA Finals, Lakers at minus 120. To make the conference, uh, playoffs, excuse me, to make the conference finals, plus 550. To win the West, plus 1100, so 11 to 1 odds. You put down $1. If they win, you get $11 back. Win the NBA championship, 25 to 1 odds. Get those bets in and be bold about it safely and responsibly as well by going to chatsports.com slash Lakers. Enter the promo code Lakers125. 
We continue to have this conversation about Goran Dragic. He's a player who Los Angeles is very familiar with because he was the point guard of a Miami Heat team that made it to the NBA Finals in the NBA bubble before falling to the aforementioned Los Angeles Lakers. Stats with the Heat over seven seasons, he was really, really good. And I honestly think, even though he hasn't played much this year, only about five games with Toronto after getting traded up north to make room for Kyle Lowry this past offseason, he could give you some semblance of these numbers. 16 points per game over seven years with Miami. Very good assist man. Shot a little less than 46% from the floor and sub 37% from distance. Those numbers, I mean, they're right there with Russell Westbrook, but he's also just a much more methodical player than Russ. And I actually think that would really help this offense because whether he's in that first unit or that second unit, he really can set up the offense well and be one of those primary distributors at the point guard guard spot. Could he take Russell Westbrook's minutes? That's one of the topics of conversation that we would have to have and that Frank Vogel and his coaching staff would have to have if Dragic does elect to sign with Los Angeles if he gets bought out by the San Antonio Spurs and that of course is the expectation. It would certainly cause drama but again I really think that he could help Los Angeles in a very big way whether he's starting or coming in off the bench and honestly it could be an ego check for Russ and maybe that forces him to continue to play like he did against Golden State where he acted as though he was the prototypical point guard. What do you think, Laker Nation? It's a really good player in my opinion. Should the Lakers sign Goran Dragic? Get into the comment section and let me know. Here at Chat Sports, we're all about the audience engagement, all about the audience interaction. We love hearing from you and we want to hear from you right now as you get that comment section popping. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Once again, get those votes in. And don't forget to subscribe to the Lakers Report. Yes, there are other larger Lakers channels out there, but they're not giving you coverage like we are. The grand scope of things, we're doing it all. News, rumors, trade alerts, injury news, informative, entertaining coverage, and multiple videos per week. So hit that red subscribe button down below. Go to YouTube.com slash Lakers TV. And thank you so much for making today's show a part of your day.